Most lifestyle systems are quite reliable and they're good little units actually. Um, and inside here, behind this cover, is a 6 CD cartridge. And I've been repairing Bose kit for quite a few years now. And I've noticed lately that I'm getting more and more calls from these uh, customers that own these things saying, oh, the CD cartridge which holds six CDs won't eject um, and it's kind of borderline whether it's worth me even getting my screwdriver out for this customer who's from Ireland very nice chap I said well send it over and if I can fix it I'll put a video on e YouTube so that other people can fix theirs so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna if I flip this cover up and uh, press the eject button which is here for the cartridge the cartridge is down in there you can just see it there it is And you get a lot of noise and whirring and clunking going on, but nothing else. There's no indication on the display. I'm gathering. Should there be a display behind there? I'm not sure. I'm going to have a look. Anyway, if there's anything worthy of note that might help everyone, I'll stick it on the internet. If not, um, at least we had a look, eh? So, yeah, back soon. All right, apologies for this, but the... Uh the silver lid is mucking up my exposure. The first thing I uh, challenge on these are is to get them apart. How it's one of these things where they designers don't like screws. You know they use those sticky pads because it really prevents the repairman getting in there. You know you you have to pry this thing open. You like 15, 20 minutes even before you start. You know, a couple of screws, whip the lid off, get in there, fix it. Oh no, you know modern products stuck together. They seem these guys that design this kind of desktop equipment seem to have been overtaken by the fact that there's no screws on mobile phones. You know, mobile phones don't have screws, so why, uh, why put screws in it? Yeah, it's not fashionable, it's not cool. You know, let's use sticky tape and glue. Let's stick it together so you can't get the bloody thing apart. They're complete morons. They just need a good smacking about, you know, uh, knock some sense into them. Whoever's managing them, find them and show them how it should be done. Let's take them apart and let's fix them instead of throwing them away for the customer to buy another unit. Charge us an extra 10 quid for the unit if you want. Make it last another two years. We're quite happy. Anyway, so to get the lid off this thing, is the first stage is that um, there's no screws underneath. If I turn that over now and have a look, there's absolutely no screws. There's a few um, bits here. I'm not sure what they're for, whether they're for the rubber feet or whether something else fits on there. I'm not really that familiar with the lifestyle system actually, but there you go. Um, yeah, no screws underneath, so what you do is, what I had to do was to get a, a long standing knife. I just pried this up slowly and I could see the edge of a sticky tab through that gap from the side. And I just got a big, uh, long uh, craft knife and just carefully cut down. And I'll show you what's underneath. I'll show you, I can't show you things, I've done it now. So the lid is now coming off. And it's just an aluminium, straightforward aluminium panel thingy. Yeah, got that? And then down in here we have um, some screws. Look, they do use screws. They do like screws. And there's a screw uh, there and there. And I'm going to pause for a moment and um, I'm going to waste your time. So let me waste my time so you don't have to waste yours. And just go to the next stage and I'll show you how I did it. I'll come back in a minute. Right, I think I've worked out how to do it. I've taken these screws out here and here and then it's plastic catches in there so if you just take your ordinary plain blade screwdriver look, there he is and just stick him in there and then lever it that way then it releases the clips inside like that and you can get this frame out so let's do the other end as well and then the whole thing just drops apart that's handy was there a spring on that I didn't hear anything go flying through the room, but you never know, do you? <laughs> and then you've got this cable here, look, which is a flat cable, which goes all the way over there and then round. And I'm guessing I can just oop that plug out at the moment, remembering that it goes through that aperture, and then move the top part away. I'm going to put that back in for now and uh, see how, what else we've got. Yes, there is a, a VFD display behind there. The display is moved, dropped out. And there's a plastic screen over it. But it's bowed forward and I'm guessing it's actually defocusing the display. I wonder why that screen is there between that and that. Presumably it's to stop um, 
dust building up on it, but it's done a very poor job. Um, yeah, so there it is. Have a closer look. I have no idea what all this does. Actually, I do really. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a worrying putting this back on. It's all full of dust. My Irish customer's got quite a dusty house, I think. And they're just ordinary hinges, I think. And there's this bit here, this mechanism here, look. See that? Can you see that? That's the swiveling mechanism for the door with the... Oh! There it goes. That's going to be fun. I can tell already. Yeah, we've got a hinge piece there. Look. And... Can you see that? I'm going to zoom in so you can have a look at that a bit closer up. Because I'm nice like that. Very nice. There you go. So there's the mechanism. And it's damp. Look. See? It's got one of those little viscous dampy wheels inside and a quadrant gear inside there and that's the pivot and the pivot goes in the old and you get a lovely smooth action. Ooh, sexy. So it's your, so your flap doesn't fly open quickly and catch you by surprise because you know you don't want that do you? You want a nice slow opening. Um, otherwise it might make you jump. You don't want to have any shocks or any nasty accidents. So I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to work out how to put that back in. There's a magnet in there as well look. Obviously engages it, goes click on something magnetic at some point. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if I find out how it goes back in, I'll let you know. I might be sending my box of parts back. <laughs> so here's the CD mechanism, look, and um, obviously the CD tray goes in through there. It's in there at the moment. That's the CD tray, or the CD. Uh, what do you call it? Magazine. Magazine. And uh, <clears throat> yeah. Then it goes up and down to select the right ride height for the CD, and then the CDs get slid out and into this mechanism down under there. They go down at the bottom level, down the ground floor. And this is just the mechanism. And if you can look at it, it's quite, it's all super springy, look. It's re-sprung, it's like an old sort of early Victorian carriage with lots of big springs. And then these rubber doofer jobbers here, these buffers. And I think, I think that if I unplug this cable again, I think that will just lift out. Oh, or will it? Is it going to come? Yes! Yes, we have a result. So there you are, Mr. Irish customer. This is what I'm doing, just in the interest of not throwing things away and letting people fix them. We might not be successful, let's face it. This might be a complete disaster, but who knows. So his cartridge is stuck in there. I'm guessing there's lots of... Um, River dance and the Irish folk music stuff in there, and I shall, um, I shall uh, listen to them before I go, before I send it back if I get it working. Uh, yeah, so turn it over. So look at what's underneath. Oops. Excuse me. Hotline. Yeah, not really a great mystery actually. I was getting rolling up my sleeves, although I've got short sleeves to show on, so my my um, rhetorical sleeves. And is that the right word? Who knows. Put it in the comments if it isn't. I like it. Uh, so yeah, if we go down here, you can see a motor. This is the motor which presumably drives the thing which puts the wheel, which drives the cog that helps to push the cartridge out, not win the war. And uh, yeah, yeah, look, look at this. I'm going to go into uh, my special zoom mode, so stand by to be astounded. Right, okay, so tele macro. <laughs> um, yeah, you are, aren't you? You are astounded. Right, okay, um, yeah, so what's happened, you can see, can you see, you can see this little spur gear here, spur, hot, Tottenham Hotspur, it's still connected to the motor, and it feels like torsionally you've got something, but actually it's not meshing properly, if I just do that, see, so it's come off the shaft. It's come off the shelf. How could they do? That? How could they do that? How could they make a product so cheap, with so little respect for their customers that they let their gear slide off the shaft? I've got forty-year-old Sony tape decks that are still going strong. Ask the Japanese, you American boys, get it sorted out. So, the name of the game is how to get that back on there, so it doesn't slide off. I could just shove it back on. I could super glue it. I could use, I could clean it off, degrease it, and then use Loctite bearing lock. Um, I could take the gear off, mash the shaft up with some pliers, and shove it back on. Um, 
yeah answers on a postcard what do you think the best solution is going to be for sticking that on i think some loctite bearing lock but in the interests of helping everyone else out that's got this problem initially i'm gonna try straightforward super glue i'm gonna clean it degrease it and then super glue it and see where we'll go from there but that's your problem there's your problem yeah yeah your gear slipped off yeah see yeah I think they should have gone to a Japanese motor company uh, like Futaba for example Futaba? yeah um, rather than the Chinese motor factory from Shenzhen uh, in China so Japanese boys not Chinese and uh, yeah but these are just acetyl gears I mean these gears will go on forever they're fantastic the acetyl material very crystalline hard plastic which they mold gears from um, you can file it, you can mould it, it doesn't shrink when you mould it and the gears, providing they, they run wet, i.e. lubricated they go on for a long time now, everything else looks fine except for one little shafty thing come off there how daft is that? answer on the postcard ah, the plot thickens, so I've got a little geary thing off the end of the shaft and I don't know if you can quite see that, but just where my thumbnail is, see my dirty thumbnail, sorry about that, I've been uh, rubbing my car down, can you see that line? See that line? Can you see that? You need a big screen to see this, but there is a crack. It is actually cracked, this gear. It's cracked around, so it's been forced onto the shaft, the material's let go. Do you remember I said it was quite crystalline? Well, it's hard, but it actually is quite brittle as well. And over the years, that has cracked and lost its grip on the shaft. So that's what's wrong with that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just go nip onto my lathe and make up a little steel collar to go over that gear, over that part. And that will then give it strength and grip it onto the shaft. So if I make it a push fit, when I shove the shaft in, it's going to stay put. So it's a bit of turning required. I will go online and see if this gear is available as a part as well and also I'll phone Bose and see what they say they say we'll sell you another one for 25% discount just go to your nearest Bose reseller and we'll sell you a cheap one um, because it's not repairable I mean, it's just a bloody plastic gear worth probably a penny uh, causing all this all this thing you can't see it but all that to go in the skip so yeah Let's uh, see if we can fix it. I'll find out if there's a gear available. If not, um, well, there might be one from a Chinese. It's probably a standard gear that you can get hold of. But I'm not sure about the... Um, I've had about five or six phone calls in about six weeks about these uh, and this particular problem. So it may be nothing. It may be significant. Um, but if you're stuffed with a, without a solution and it's, uh, it's now August 2018, within a month or two, if you need one, I might be able to point in the right direction. Cheers in. I'll be back soon. Uh, so I'm just turning up a sleeve to go on this uh, on this gear and we'll see how we get on. It's a very tight fitting little collar to go on just to keep, keep it pressed shut when it's on the shaft. To grip the shaft and also to stop it splitting any further. So I'm going to turn that up. I'll be back in a minute. 3 16 inch uh, milling bit is just about exactly the right diameter. I'm hoping that uh, it'll be a sliding fit. When the shaft goes in, it'll expand slightly and grip it. So let's try that. That should do her. Uh, it's going to have to be plan B, which I'm going to just gently open up with a milling cutter in the in the heel. Yes, so this is what I've made. It's just a small aluminium collar pressing around the outside of the gear so that when you shove the gear on the shaft, the crack will try and open up but won't be able to thereby restricting the diameter and giving a tight fit on the shaft. It's only a little tiny oopsie aluminium collar. Focus you focusing thing. Yeah the focus is gone. But you get the idea. I'll put it on and see how we go. So the gear is on. The gear is on. 
What is it about super glue that gets all over your fingers? I've just got my fingers now, this stuff. Yeah, so we've got this uh, this collar here, little aluminium collar, over the split side of the gear which is supposed to grip on the shaft. And actually, it was a sliding fit when I took it off, but it actually is quite a push to put that back on. But I've also put a tiny bit of liquid super glue on the, on the collar. I degreased it first, then super glue on there, then super glue on the shaft. And it's actually amazing how good super glue is for this sort of thing. So I'm just going to put it back together and um, hope for the best. I think it's going to be okay, actually, um, from experience. But yeah, you can't get that gear separately. You have to buy the whole lot, which is ridiculous, but typical. Back in a minute. So here we go, all back together, not tried yet. Moment of discovery. Press the button, contact. Oh, it's taking, ooh, it's taking current. Oh, something's happening. It's doing something. I think it's trying to extract a disc. Maybe it's got out of sequence and thinks the disc's in there. Doesn't seem quite right, does it? Right, so let's eject. Let's see if it stops, actually. Okay, so... Oh, there you go. So it's checking every disc station to see whether there's a disc in there in the cassette, or the cartridge, whatever you want to call it. Magazine, how about that, That's sexy, a magazine, right? So I fix this now, so that it's ooh, nice and working, the spring had come off. I think somebody had this apart, and I'll press the eject button and we'll see what happens. Oh, there you go. Lovely jubbly. One cartridge, nothing in it, nothing in it, can't play it, can't play any with a dance or Irish folk music or whatever it is those guys listen to over there. I bet it's good stuff though. I've been in pubs when they've been playing that's fantastic. I've never had such a good time as I had an Irish pub when the band starts, honestly. The next day was terrible, but the <laughs> Saturday night was fantastic. Yeah, so let's just go see if that works now. There you go, so it's going through its checking again, so I think I have fixed it. I have fixed it. There's no display on at the moment, but I'm guessing you need the remote control to set the thing in on fire. So yeah. Little tiny weeny gear almost made it go to the tip, but now it's gone back to the customer in Ireland. And uh, I'm hoping you'll be happy with it. We'll see. But anyway, that's that. So I hope you enjoy watching. And if you've got one of these, um, yours may well have the same problem. And you should be able to get someone to make you a little sleeve or even just try some super glue, but don't get super glue on the teeth and make sure you degrease the shaft first and it should work. But anyway, a bit more life, um, a bit less plastic in the ocean and in the landfill. And um, yeah, enjoy your product and thanks for watching.